Hey, what's up? This is Brandon Simmons for BrandonSimmons.biz, and this is my weekly video blog called Bullheaded, a review of the Houston Texans news, as well as a preview of the upcoming game matchups. So, the Texans are coming off for their bye week, and also, before that, they got a win over the Detroit Lions. Now, they're looking into the second half of the season and be starting that off with a game on the road against the Jacksonville Jaguars, and that might be a little bit tricky. But we're going to get into that in just a few minutes. First off, let's first off, let's address this whole um uh, let's address this whole second half of the season. There's two questions, two main questions that probably I need to ask or and probably the rest of the fan base is wondering as well. Um first question, what kind of team are we going to get in the second half of the season? First half of the season, it's finished off five and three. Uh, won every game at home. Went five and zero at home, if you will. Um, but on the road, it was a different story. Zero um, and three on the road, and just you know, a complete embarrassment. Um, mind you, those games were against teams that were you know pretty popping at the time. Uh, first loss came against the New England Patriots on national television. Uh, second loss came against the uh, Minnesota Vikings, who might not be doing so hot right now, but at the time they were just magnificent on both defense, on both the defensive and offensive side of the ball. Um, the last road loss or last road game came at the hands of the Denver Broncos, uh, quarterback Brock Oswald's former team, and to make matters worse, um, this is the same game where his teammates were just uh, giving us plenty of bulletin board material to build off of and go in there and beat them. But um, we ended up falling short and our offense ended up looking like a complete mess. But all that is behind us. Um, the way I see it at this time last year, um, you know, the bye week, when the bye week was uh, coming up, um, we were still in quite a bit of a limbo. Um, in fact, I, I can probably remember that we were still having issues at the quarterback position. Um, we were a couple games under 500 and we were just sitting in like a horrible division. This time of year or this time this year, um, the things have changed a little bit. Uh, we are definitely certified of who our quarterback is going to be uh, for the rest of the season. Um, yeah, the division still sucks, and I'll touch on that in a few seconds, but we are on the positive side of that, where we're not climbing from the bottom to reach the top. We are actually in the top. We may very well be in control, but with that being said, what kind of team is going to be in control of this division? What kind of team is going to help us win uh, this division and carry us into the postseason? Um, I, you know, we're going to definitely one thing to look out for is the quarterback improvement. Um, you know, Brock Osweiler, you know, he might have had some trouble getting accustomed to the playbook, and that kind of, and that might have attributed to some of his um, throwing mistakes. However, um, after having a week off, you know, did he dedicate himself um, to get more connected with the receivers, um, dedicate himself more to the playbook, study more plays, and just be prepared out there on the field? Um, as far as our receivers, um, definitely uh, Will Fuller. Uh, I keep seeing him on the injury report, like here and there. I'm not sure if he's officially out tomorrow, or if he's just, you know, on there uh, dealing with hamstring industry or industry <laughs> hamstring injury or whatever. But you know, hopefully they'll get healthy. Um, probably the main thing that we need to get healthy is our O line. Um, you know, just moving those different pieces around uh, throughout the first half of the season that caused a lot of um, just a lot of breakdowns in our offense and in particular um, in our running game. Um, you know, when we signed Lamar Miller in the offseason, a lot of people were high on him. Like I was high on him. You know, and I really, you know, I haven't seen him do too much. You know, I just knew like that I knew the capabilities he had as a player and what he did in uh, Miami. So. I'm, you know, a lot of people were high on him. We were like, you know, we got a good, you know, we got a good quarterback. Um, we have a running back that can take the pressure off of him. But, you know, it really hasn't added up to that. So, um, definitely we're going to see what kind of offense we're going to get on the second half of the season and see if they make any changes. Um, as far as our defense, um, you know, defense played pretty solid uh, first half of the year. Um, they finished, I believe, fifth overall and yeah fifth overall in defense but 
I, one of the most important things that they did was finish, I believe, either, either number one or definitely in the top five of pass defense. Um, that's going to be pretty key as, as we get into uh, the latter part of the season. And we're going to be facing off against quarterbacks like a Phillip Rivers, um, a Derek Carr next in the next game, actually. And, you know, even a guy like Blake Bortles, who we're facing tomorrow. I mean, you know, Blake Bortles. Yeah, you know, he's playing on a garbage ass team in the Jacksonville Jaguars. But um for the most part, it's not just it's not not largely to his fault, you know, it's just you know, just the team is just bad, you know, coaching's bad, offense is bad to a certain extent. well, yeah, offense is pretty much bad, but you know, Bortles, if you give him the opportunity, like he will make some plays for you. So not to uh, just ride on his boat or everything like that. I'm just trying to um, reiterate the point about um, our de our passing defense and what kind of uh, talent talent of quarterbacks that we have coming up. Um, definitely uh, Andy Dalton. Um, I think we'll, we'll definitely be playing the Colts again on the road. Uh, so, you know, just guys like that. Um, I think our linebackers are going to have to step it up as well. And especially just overall our front seven as far as like uh, stopping the run. Uh, you know, we were down near the bottom of the league, you know, as far as like, like allow defense, as far as rush defense goes, we were like near the bottom of the league. And so, you know, that can't happen either because, I mean, if, yeah, if we can take away the uh, passing game or passing lanes of these upcoming teams you know that doesn't mean anything if they have you know a running back that can get us like that can get them uh, 100 yards or so or 200 yards because I mean those 100 yards can equal into you know clocks being run out and all this other stuff especially if we're in a position of uh, of like trying to catch up so uh, definitely uh, our run defense is going to have to improve if we want to get a shot at the playoffs this year um so with that being said, um, what kind of division are we going to have as far as like what is the AFC South going to look like um, come this second half of the season? Uh, you know, first half, they were pretty horrible. They were, I mean, they were shitty. Like, <laughs> I don't know what else, other way to put it, you know, but, you know, we've been getting the last couple of years, you know, AFC South has just been getting a bad rep for just being an overall bad division. And, you know, right now I think the Titans are looking at finishing in the top five of the draft again. Um, obviously, you got the Jacksonville Jaguars. who They won a couple games starting out, but, you know, their level of play is just not showing up in the win column as much. So, um, you know, what kind of uh, division are we going to get in the second half? Uh especially with the Colts and Andrew Luck. Um, last year, the Colts, you know, they had Luck in the beginning, and then uh, he got injured, and so they brought in Hasselbeck, and then, you know, they tried to bring Luck back, and, you know, it just wasn't working. So now it's like, um, now that Luck is there, um, what kind of, uh, you know, what kind of uh, team is he going to, like, what kind of team is the Colts going to be? And is that going to stand in the way of our chances of getting this division or getting into the playoffs? So um, I think it's definitely something that, you know, you need, we need to probably, I think the fans are probably going to ask themselves. And it's something that I'm going to ask myself as well. Is like pretty much um, what kind of team are we going to get? Is this going to be an improved team um, that's, you know, got all the mistakes out the way or for, most of the mistakes out the way, if you will. And, you know, this is going to play better. You know, it's better here on out. It's going to play focused. Um, they're going to improve in the areas that they need to improve in. Is that the team we're going to get? Or is it going to be a reflection of the team um, from the first half of the season? And just, they're just going to come out and, you know, try to wing it here and there. Because, I mean, if they go five and three, the second half of the season, um, it's not bad. I guess, you know, it's 10 and 6, and you can win the division at 10 and 6 on, you know, especially in this division. You could probably win. if Hopefully it doesn't happen, but you could probably win this division at eight games if you, if it comes to that. But um, 10 and 6 is not bad. However, it's the practicing, it's the habits that you've, you know, practiced and performed or whatever to get to 10 and 6. So, um Make sure, just, I mean, I'm pretty sure, you know, every team got their little speech, you know, rah-rah, aim for 
um, and however many games he got left, eight left, eight up, aim for eight and zero, and all this other stuff. But definitely, if they want to do that, it's going to start with the habits. And definitely, um, is the second question. You know, what kind of division you're going to get? Because I mean, you might have. I mean, depending if these teams that you're that are that's in our division now, yeah, they play pretty crappy during your first half of the season. But in the second half, are they going to just all turn it up and just try to uh, knock you off your throne? Uh, but with that being said, the quest to finish off this second season, I mean second half of the season, starts tomorrow when the Texans go on the road, take on the Jaguars. Now, as I alluded to a little bit earlier, um, all three of the road games that the Texans have played so far have been garbage. And we've just looked like Boo Boo the Fool out there, um, both offense and defense. Um, if you can recall back to the Patriots game, um, nobody was clicking on either side of the ball. And, you know, eventually, you know, they had those two fumbles or whatever that you could blame it on. But at the same time, nobody got anything going. And that's just something you just, I mean, yeah, it's a fumble, but you just got to overcome that. Um, you know, it happens. A player's going to fumble. So, but with that said, being said, um, you know, tomorrow, one of the first things that the Texans need to do, and this is probably going to be key for the whole game, uh, make sure they have no rust from the bye week. Um, you know, make sure these guys are, instead of coming off sluggish, is like you're just waking up in the morning and you're just trying to get that early stretch in and you need that first cup of coffee. No. Texans need to come out tomorrow like they had seven cups of coffee and just start blasting away at the Jacksonville Jaguars. Because like I said, these are the Jacksonville freaking Jaguars. They are garbage. They te The Texans can whoop their ass all day, every day, and it needs to happen tomorrow. Definitely. Make sure they have no rust. Come out firing on all cylinders. Um, one of the main things that they're going to have to do um, is just shut down Bortles somehow. And it can be done. Um, the, I believe their coaches are going to probably put him in. They're probably going to force call some wacky plays that will make him have mistakes. But one of the main things that can that can happen for that is rely, have them shut down their running game. Uh, their running game is their um, overall rushing game is averaging like 89 yards a game so their whole run offense is not that great and that works out for our run defense um you know i'm pretty sure our run defense can stop eight, 89 yards a game i'm pretty i have that much confidence in them um like i said they should be refreshed um they fought you know they fought hard all year um so far and so, coming off this bye week, they should feel energized, uh, fresh legs, everything. Will Fort, um, all those guys, Clowney, uh, Merciless, you know, they should be able to, like, knock that running game out. They knock the running game out, then it's probably going to be a much easier task as far as, like, just um, shutting down Blake Portals. Because then you'll, um, more than likely, he's probably going to throw, and so you're just better prepared for it, if anything. But with that being said, would also um, enable to do that. You need a strong start as well and a strong finish. So um, I'm probably mentioning this like a couple times while describing uh, describing uh, what they need to do to win the game. But um, they coming off that uh, bye week, you need to just have a strong start. Like probably 14 nothing in the first quarter. That's probably what needs to happen. And you know it's Jacksonville. You know just. They're not that good this year. And I get, like, how things can be in a rivalry game because, I mean, whether you like it or not, you know, Jacksonville Jaguars are our rivals. Um, you know, uh, I think this is one of those times where you just kind of, like, throw that rivalry factor out and just go out and just beat them for the team that they are. Um, so just keep doing that for all four quarters. Have a strong start um, when, this half t when the second half comes. Um, just keep your foot on the pedal, keep your foot on the necks, and just finish up strong until you, hey, just, just until you're just out of there, uh, until you just put enough, until you just put too many damn points where it's like 
four strings in the game, you know. Sorry for stuttering over that, but I couldn't look. I couldn't find a better, you know, artistic way to really just say that. But uh, point is, um, make sure when just to reiterate, um, when the or, excuse me, uh, point is. Uh, just to go back over um, what they need to do, um, just come off this bye week, um, just going at the Jaguars, and you know, just shut their run game down, force Bortles to make more plays than he has to, and you know, after that, you know, once you shut him down, um, you know, games in hand. So that's all I have for this week. I'm Brandon Simmons for BrandonSimmons.biz. Holla.